Hi everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge and welcome to a reading vlog. Yes, I know I haven't done one in forever and I know people really like them. It has just been a crazy couple of months. Um, I can't even remember the last reading vlog I did, but it's been a while. So for this reading vlog, it's a little bit random. I don't have a perfect plan, but I thought I would start one because I don't have a super busy weekend coming up. There's just the normal, like I'm doing something with my friends Friday night and then Saturday night is Outlander, but like that's kind of it for once, um, which is great because normally I have a bazillion things going on. So I thought we would just do a reading vlog for this. So as you saw in the picture, I am going to be starting my reread of Throne of Glass. I am doing a reread along or Sarah J. Mass along or S. Jam along. I can remember and I'm the one who named it. I know. But I really wanted to reread her books and I know that a lot of friends were planning to do it as well. And some people will be reading her for the first time and I thought, why don't I just plan it? And I kind of did it out of like a little bit of selfish reasons I said is because like I'm a bit of a control freak we know this um, and I wanted to be in charge of when I was reading them you know because I've seen some people do readathons like this and I know we can read really fast like we can read some of us can read extremely fast especially if we have audiobooks and I just thought it was like if we wait too long someone's gonna decide to do a reread and they're gonna do it where we read like a book a week and I just didn't want to do that and again, this is all hypothetical. No one said that was happening. I just, I put out some feelers and I had done a little thing on my Instagram and I was like, who wants to be involved? And there was a huge amount of people who said they did. And so I was like, cool. And so then I went through my Instagram and all of my booktuber friends who have channels, I was like, do you want to help me host this? Because I just can't commit to hosting a live show for every single one of these. Like, I, I just can't. So we've split it up between, I think there's like 10 or 12 of us who will either be hosts or co-hosts um, and kind of lead the discussions. So I'm very excited. The first two I am hosting because nobody, like I wanted to do the first one and then nobody wanted to do Crown of Midnight's. Someone would have done it. Someone would have done it. But I was like, okay, I'll do the first two. And then I'm doing the last one, which won't be until next March. So it'll be a whole year by the time. So that's the point is we're reading either one or two books through the next year. And we're going to go through Sarah J. Mass's books in publication order. Because if you've read Sky and Breath, there are certain connections that we're looking for. I want to keep it very, you know, I'm not trying to spoil that far ahead or anything. I'm just saying there are certain things that we know are connected and I want to reread them with the eye to look for those connections because I know just from certain things Sarah has said over the years, I know that she had plans for certain things way, way, way earlier than us, you know? And I want to see when we start to pick up on those and when we can like see what it was. So yeah, so this month of April, We'll be reading Throne of Glass and Crown of Midnight and then two of the novellas because I just I wanted to split the novellas up so that we didn't have to do one month that was only novellas. So that's what we're going to do. Um, so yeah, so that is the start of this reading vlog. This reading vlog will not only be about this because obviously we're going to do a live show talking about it, but you know, I, I will share my thoughts as I go. Um, I also need to finish my arc of How to Be a Wallflower which I'm only a quarter of the way through and this book already came out, but I just didn't get to it. I just didn't get to it. And now the audiobook is out. So that's great. Then I also have a couple other arcs that I could probably start, but I don't know. We'll see. I'm also going to bake a cake today and make some bread. So that's kind of the plan. I maybe didn't say this. I took the day off of work today. It's Thursday, March 31st. And I just... <laughs> I was kind of sick last night. I'm feeling absolutely fine today. Like we're good. But I was just very tired when I was supposed to be getting up for work and I was kind of crabby and I was like, you know what? It's self care. It's a self care day. So I got up, I went to target, got myself a pink drink, 
had a breakfast sandwich. I did a live show this morning to just chat with you guys while I put my makeup on. Went a little bit intense with the eyebrows, but that's okay. <laughs> so yeah, so now I'm just gonna chill and I'll try to remember to do some check-ins for you guys as I go. But yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a good day today. So we'll, we'll check in later. I don't know if this will stay, but here's the base of the pineapple upside down cake. So there's brown sugar and butter and then the pineapple rings and maraschino cherries. And then this is a yellow cake mix and you use the juice of the pineapple rings and then however much water it takes to equal a cup and then you make the mix and then you pour this. Lightly push it over. Bloop. And then it looks like that. You don't have to totally cover the cherries because it's going to bake up. And then goes in the oven for 45 minutes. So I'll show you what it looks like. Later. And here it is taken out and turned upside down. It did get a little bit dark. I left it in just a little too long, but that's good. So like these will be like candied because of the brown sugar and the butter. And then um, before I serve it, I'll put the whipped cream on it, but I'm gonna put it back. Um, once it's cool, I'll put it back in its pan and then we'll put it in there. So yeah, so it looks really good. I'm pretty excited about it. Turn that off. So that's fun. But anyway, I'm only about 50 pages in to Throne of Glass because I was, my hair is being weird, because I was cooking and I ate lunch and the day just gets away from you. I did not fill my eyebrows in perfectly. But anyway, I'll check in with a better like reading update soon, but I just thought I would show you what happened with the cake so I didn't leave you in suspense before I pack it up so there we go all right I still feel like my eyebrows are extremely loud today and I missed a patch but whatever whatever it's fine so it is a little after five I just ordered myself some dinner because that is also part of self-care at least I'm telling myself that um, I just ordered myself a burger. I haven't had a burger in forever, so that's what I ordered for me. Um, I made it, um, 120 pages into, oh, it's back there, into Throne of Glass so far. Just through the first, like, trial. And we also know that a champion has been killed and one of them like disappeared so we're like down two plus someone lost so we're like down three champions so far um so that's good i also was like marking quite a few different things like the mention of the place where selena's come from being terrison and you know that the king and queen were killed and that like all the libraries were burned and then we also met met princess Nahima 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 I can't even remember what the narrator said I've already forgotten um and I love meeting her for the first time and being like oh I love her so yeah it's going really good like it's so engaging um I don't want to finish it all in one sitting so I like stopped um I'll listen to it some more later but what I didn't do 
was pick up how to be a wallflower like I was supposed to. Neither did I pick up one of the other books that I'm in the middle of. No. I decided what was really the best thing for me to do today was to reread Contradictions. <laughs> and I regret nothing because I am, uh, I'm reading my favorite part, so I'm not doing a full reread. But if you didn't know, Contradictions is a Dramine fanfic. And it's by Ampersands. And it is my favorite after Manacled. And I mean, it's definitely a less stressful and more fun book to read than Manacled is. Manacled is its own epicness, but it's not a fun book to just hop in and reread. And I've been, I've been wanting to read parts of Contradictions again. And today was just the day because again, self-care. Man, I need to read out my hair soon too. I'd meant to do that this week, but it just hasn't happened yet. Every time I dye my hair, I'm like, okay, now I'm not going to go two months before I do it again. And then I do. But that's okay. Nobody else cares what my hair looks like but me. So, But anyway, there's a little update. Not much has happened. Um, I was going to bake my bread. But I decided not to because I'm not going to bring that to my friend's house now. I'm just going to bring the cake and the, the I made a trail mix, a homemade trail mix. So, yeah, and then, you know, I was skimming on TikTok for way too long. And, again, I'm picking through contradictions. I probably won't um, read too much more of it today because I do have, like, there is, that I want to start. Because I know that I'm going to be getting some more arcs soon and I don't want them all to pile up is kind of where I'm at with everything, you know? Oops, my eye. So it's like, I'm not in a hurry right now for some of them, but if I wait too long, I could cause myself problems. So also I got to say, it's like weird vlogging again because it's been so long and I always forget what it's like a little bit. So but you guys say you want more vlogs, so I make them. Don't let me down. Hey everybody, it is now Friday. I just got home from work and I definitely have some updates now on what I've been reading, but I got a package in the mail that I have been eagerly anticipating from Maggie Cole. Um, Maggie is an author that I fell in love with last year. That is her Mafia War series right there that I loved. And I've been seeing my friends get their uh, copy of this. And I've just been waiting patiently because it takes me forever to get stuff in North Dakota. Oh my gosh, it's like double in here. Very protected. Ooh. But this is her, I can't get it open. This is her upcoming release that comes out in two weeks. And it's signed. And she sent me an early copy of Toxic, ah! which is going to be Mafia Wars New York, um, which I'm so excited. I believe this series, yeah, this is going to follow the Marianos who connect to um, the characters in there. Like, if you've read Mafia Wars all the way through, which I know not a lot of people have. I know there's 10 of them. Some people get caught up along the way. But some of my favorite books in the series were later on. Um, but this series, um, the heroine in this book, Bridget O'Connor... She was married to one of the hero's brothers from, from that series, and he was uh, killed, like he died, and she, her family is in um, New York, and there's another family, the Marinos, who their younger sister marries one of the heroes in that series, and 
we start to be introduced to them. And so I'm so excited that Maggie is staying in the mafia world. I'm so excited to read this one. Um, this one is going to be an enemies to lovers. Um, and she does enemies to lovers so well. So I'm so excited to read this. Literally, it may change my weekend plans, but I'm so excited to have it. So thank you so much, Maggie, for sending this to me. Um, I can't freaking wait. Like I, I literally am so excited. So, eee! okay, let's do a little bit of an update. First, let's update on Throne of Glass. I took the dust jacket off. So I am this far into it. I am just, well, I'm more than halfway, but not super, super far in. Um, I was able to listen to a good chunk of this at work today, which I knew that I would. I'd read about like 100 pages of it yesterday, and then I read another like 130 pages today. So where I'm at right now, Selena has competed in three of the competitions that the champions are in. We've lost like three or four of the champions have either been kicked out or died at this point, um, which that's no good for anybody. Um, and like tensions are kind of rising between everything because like the king's not really trying to find out who's murdering champions. And I mean, they're all criminals, so who cares, right? Who cares if they are dying or bad things are happening to them? So I am so sucked into it. I haven't taken a ton of notes um, because I'm really just enjoying it. I may come to regret that when we have our like chat, but I feel like specifically too for this first one, like there are definitely things that I'm noticing, you know, with the benefit of foreknowledge, you know, like I know what happens in this series. But there's a ton of stuff I don't remember, not only because I've always said I'm not the most detail-oriented reader, and also this world is just so big and there's so much that I missed a lot. But specifically, like I made mark of something that I really want to track while I read while I do all these rereads is the mention of swords and weaponry that have names. Specifically because in the links that I've found, you know, and I don't want to like totally spoil this if people haven't read them or don't know but the most solid links between series that I found are the names of weapons because the weapons seem to be enduring you know the weapons seem to um, last a very long time um, they have very distinct descriptions of the weapons and so again being that this is the first book any weapons that are mentioned I'm trying to like to, to make a note of them. So there's two that I really noticed um, that I was like, ooh, make a mark of it. Let me see. One of them, I need to put a sticky note where I found this one, but one of them is one that the king has that is called something. Dang it. Oop. Is it here? I'm not sure. I'll have to find it. But there's a weapon that the king has that has a name, um, you know, and it's a it's a bad one. And then there is a weapon that uh, that Lord Erewhon has when Selena is in the like she's in the underground area, and there's like a picture or there's a um, what is it? There's a displayed sword. And the sword is called Demarius, and she whispers its name. Um, so yeah, those are those are the things I'm tracking. I know that's weird, but I feel like tracking the weapons is something I want to do this time around because weapons are things that I've popped. I've seen them distinctly. Certain weapons or types of weaponry show up in all three series, so I want to be watching that. There's plenty of other things I want to watch as well. Um, there's a certain character in the books that has a second name and I didn't realize how early we hear that second name um and so that name pops up that is Elena Galathinius Halivyard and why has it been forgotten um and that is a reveal that I remember 
it being really cool the first time through and it's still something that like people who at this point haven't read the books they maybe don't realize that we're talking about the same person when those names are mentioned whereas some people probably do um because the names are so alike so anyway I think it's cool but yeah so I'm 230 pages into that and I'm having a good time and then I did read some other things yesterday um that weren't like the bestest things ever like I finished this dark romance trilogy I was reading which I'm not going to go into too much depth but it was this girl, um, this woman, she was in a plane crash. She gets rescued by this guy who is actually a serial killer who lives in the wilderness out there. He's not like currently a serial killer, but I feel like you are still a serial killer, even if you are no longer doing it. If you have done, then you are. Anyway, um, and they end up with this very twisted relationship, but they are very much in love. It was kinky. It was crazy and each book was only like the first one was like 220 pages but then the next two were about 100 to 130 so you can actually buy the bind up as one book and then it's like 500 pages the whole story so that was cool um but I gave that last one three and a half stars like the first one was four star because it was very like shocking and like I didn't know what was gonna happen next and then books two and three were like three and a half for me and then I read The Cowboy's Forbidden Crush by Deborah Garland. This is one that's on my April TBR. It's a book that I got for free. It was actually a novella. It was only like 160 pages. And it's it's a weird setup. It is this, this girl, she's like 22, she's going to veterinary school. And her professor is a cowboy and, and a vet. And he has a rule, he doesn't date his students. So on graduation day, she actually gives him her phone number and then they go out on a date and they decide they wanna be, they wanna, they wanna fuck. Um, and then it turns out that an internship she needs to do now, she doesn't make it into the one place she wanted. And so she ends up having to be a intern at this one ranch where her professor works. And so now he's kind of being her professor again. But now they've already had a taste of each other and they can't stop fucking. The writing was really bad. And y'all know, y'all know, if Jen says the writing's bad, it's, it's not, that's not me. If it's bad, it's because I said it's bad. No, but like I never noticed the writing being bad. That's my point. My point is, is if the writing's bad, it probably is pretty bad because if it was enough to jolt me out of it, it was probably pretty bad. So I only gave that one two and a half stars. And I only finished it because I didn't want to DNF a book that was 160 pages. And that had been on my TBR for the past two years. So it's gone now. We're done with that. So there we go. So the plans for tonight, um, in just a little bit here, I'm going to be going to my friend's place. You know, I think I talked about that earlier. I got that pineapple upside down cake to take and some trail mix that I made and the steaks are all thawed out. So we're ready to grill those. That'll be fun. Um, so I probably won't get much more reading done tonight. I may listen to some more Throne of Glass. Um, and then something fell down my shirt. Don't mind me. That's nice. <laughs> And then Kink Camp, uh, Kink Camp, The Hunted by A. Anders actually just came out. And this is a book I've been wanting to read for a while because it's going to be about this camp. That's a kink camp where you can go and have whatever pleasure you'd like. And this one's focused on primal play, which is one of my favorite kinks that never gets done unless it's like a serial killer or a stalker, which is fine. I like dark romance. But there was one that I read recently called The Four Leaf, which was a St. Patrick's Day novella, which was great. And they were two friends and he's into primal play, but it was so short. It was so short and it wasn't like sexy enough because it was 90 pages and 60 of the pages was just leading up to the one scene that they do together. So that was a bummer. But this one is like, it's a like full novella length. It's 200 pages and... This one should be getting right down to the sexy primal play because that's what this camp is for. So this is going to be a whole series at this kink camp. I think there's going to be other authors that write in it too, um, but it will have different kinks. So I'm very excited for that and I will probably try to read that one tonight. Then um, 
yeah, that's my, those are my main thing. And then like, guys, I really want to read this. Although I have an arc that's due before this arc. Cause this arc is, this book doesn't come out till the 14th. So I have a little bit of time to get to this one. So we shall see. But anyway, this was a good update and I will check in with you soon. Hello. Sorry for the bad light and all that jazz, but it's Saturday night. Whew, the day went by so quickly. Um, I meant to do more updates, but that's what happens. That's what happens when we vlog. Ugh, the lighting is really bad. Sorry. We'll hold it up here for a little bit. But it was a great day today. I got my filming done. I did some editing and then um, I actually went and hung out with friends tonight. It was a great time and it really was nice to do stuff like this weekend. You guys, if you're tracking, I did stuff with friends both Friday and Saturday. How cool am I being social and shit? Like, come on. Um, yeah, I used to do that all the time and it just hasn't happened. But... I didn't have a ton of updates for like reading wise, you know, so then I forget to, to check in, but I'll have a more probably like full way to end it tomorrow, but just to check in. So I did read Kink Camp. I know I mentioned that. Um, and I talk about that in my weekly wrap up, which already have been up. I enjoyed it and I really like the idea of this Kink Camp, but I was a little bit let down because it's only 200 pages and I feel like this is a book that either needed a bit more to go into the issues that the heel, the hero was dealing with because he's healing from some, like he lost his wife and then like he's the one with the primal kink and he very much wants to keep the interactions to like not knowing each other's name and keeping them like this anonymous hunt that he goes on. Um, and of course, because it's at a kink camp, like this is consensual. And so it's really fun because there's some like, uh, rape fantasy in this, but it's, 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 I don't know what to say. It's not even a particularly like aggressive forms of that. Um, because the heroine is very much like, no, stop. But they both signed up for it type of thing. Um, so it was fun, but the issues that he needs to work with, I feel like we didn't do that. So I wish it was either shorter where we just had the sexy times or it had been longer and we went into more detail. That's how I explain it. And then I actually just finished uh, Throne of Glass and it was wonderful. I had a great time rereading that book. Um, I like immediately want to jump into Crown of Midnight and so I'll need to hold off a little bit on that, though, because that's the book we're doing in the second half of April. But I do have The Assassin and the Pirate Lord that I could read, so I will definitely get to in the next couple days, probably. I might do that audiobook at work on Monday, which won't take very long, because it's only, like, a couple hours for the audiobook for that novella. So, anyway, I forgot that I needed to read the arc for Bright Like Midnight by Jay Wolf. This is the second book in the Savage You series, which is a spinoff from the Savage Crew series. Um, and I really liked the Savage Crew series. That was high school, like, bully romances, kind of. Some of them were, some of them weren't. Um, but I actually, it's one of the few bully series that I actually really enjoyed. But the first Savage You, I didn't love a ton. But this one... We'll see because I believe there's going to be some drug content in this one because the hero is a drug dealer. If you've been around my channel, especially recently, um, I don't love drugs in books. Now, I don't know this for sure. I just, I mean, I know that he's a drug dealer. I don't know how much drugs will be talked about in this one. We'll have to see because if drugs are like, Again, I'm fine if they are mentioned that they're there. What I don't like is seeing people under the influence of them. I don't enjoy that. Um, so him being the drug dealer, if we're just talking about it, we're not doing it, I might be fine. But we'll see. But I want to give it a go because I'm on Julia Wolf's art team and I want to give this one its full 
chance, you know? So anyway, this was just a quick update. I will pop in tomorrow when I wrap up the vlog. Um, I'm just waiting to for Outlander to be on. I have another hour before Outlander's on because I always watch that right when it drops so that the next day after church I can film my Outlander review. So anyway, we will chat. Hey guys, tomorrow. so I'm going to wrap up this vlog. Um, it is Sunday afternoon and I want to get this edited and pre-uploaded for my channel members. But I ended up, I am literally almost done with Bright Like Midnight and I'm really enjoying this one. I've had a great time reading it and I'm really happy because um, I think I said this in a previous clip. I didn't super love um, Soft Like Thunder. The main heroine in that one just wasn't quite someone that I connect with, which it happens sometimes. They're not all going to be it. And though the heroine in this book, she isn't someone... Oh, hold on my uh amazon implement was going off so i had to make it stop um she is definitely someone who's not like me she is this very um small del she's very described as being very delicate but is like a, a curvier girl a lot a, quite a few of jay wolf's heroines are curvier um because she writes plus size heroines a lot, but she's definitely very, um, like short in stature and considered delicate, but very curvy and, and beautiful. And our hero, Amir is just very obsessed with her. And what starts out as, you know, kind of this like captor captive or even like on a very light end, like a slave master situation because she owes him something, um, in exchange for him sparing someone. Um, the more we find out about how she placed herself in this situation, there's just lots of layers to this. Um, this one is extremely sexy, by the way, too. Like, it's a very slow burn for a lot of it, even though there are a couple that has had, like, previous interactions. They haven't been like together. They had like a one night where they were and almost together. So they're definitely sexually attracted to each other. And then it's a slow burn during this one because the hero is trying to kind of keep himself from that. And once the heroine like pushes him too far, he kind of like snaps in this very sexy way. And their sexual relationship is like, Julia Wolf writes great smut y'all. I'm just saying. So but yeah, I'm going to wrap up this video to get it edited and get it up. But I mean, this book, it's riding between a four and a five. It really just depends on the final conflict in this one and how it's going to play out. But so far, I'm pretty impressed with specifically the hero because he doesn't let the heroine get away with not explaining herself because she is very shy and she is timid in a lot of ways. But he will kind of poke her and be like, no, you need to like use your words here. Tell me what's going on. You know, don't just assume that I'm assuming things. And I really like that. And it pushes her to be better. So I'm really enjoying it. And yeah, that's what I'm going to finish up. And then I have an arc for Kerrigan Burn. And so I think that's what I want to start today. But I also really want to try this one gay fantasy romance that I discovered. So we'll see. We'll see which way that I go. But thank you so much for sticking around for this vlog. It means so much to me. Um, I'm Like I have shared, I'm going to try to do more vlogs going forward. I will hopefully do one again in a couple weeks when I start Crown of Midnight. Because I think I will maybe try to vlog my rereads of Sarah J Mass, But like mix it in with other things. So we'll see. So thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Bye.